Hello guys and welcome back to my channel, Paul here again, yes I'm back, a quick video, uh, I'm still riding by the way, if you're wondering, I've got my collection right behind me, my skateboards, my electrical bike, uh, today's video is going to be about a quite significant upgrade to one of the remotes that we guys use for electrical skateboards, which is Flea Sky VX4. There are quite a few remotes in the market and I've got I think almost all of them and I do use them for my builds. Uh, VX4 is quite a nice remote. If you don't know what this is, I'm going to leave the link to the full review in the description. So have a look. VX4 by Flipsky, quite a nice remote. By the way guys, it would be good to know what do you think about electrical skateboard remotes? What's your favorite? What do you think about the Flipsky VX4? Just you know, off curiosity, wanted to see what do you guys use. So quite significant improvement to this remote. I like everything about this remote. The only thing I don't is this uh, trigger or the thumb wheel. It's very small and it does not protrude a lot from the uh, remote itself. So when you're using it, it's quite hard to have the grip over it. And the same time, God forbid, you're using the gloves with it. I mean, the gloves I'm using actually got a thumb cut off so I can feel the remote. So the upgrade today is guys is by 3D services as a really high quality replacement for this thumb wheel. Now let's pop into my garage, let's have a look at this 3D services upgrade and let's install it onto my remote and see how simple it is. Okay guys here we go we are now in my shop in my workshop so this is what you get from 3D services you get a sticker uh, and you get this nice little kit. So this kit consists of the aluminium thumb wheel, which is quite nice, quite good quality, and also a digital 3.3 volt hole sensor. Not the 5 volt, 3.3 volt. There we go, let's see it up close. Very nicely put together, clean, quite heavy which is good and the spring on it is quite nice as well I can feel the difference already just imagining this being in the remote yeah it's nice nice spring that's good also if we have a look guys this is the original thumb wheel it's not protruding too much and that's the 3D services one. As you can see, this little nib, and this is the one you're going to feel when you're using the remote. So that's much, much nicer. Obviously, we need to install it first, but I can already see that it should be quite an improvement. So, better sensor and much nicer design for the wheel. Bear in mind, guys, that you will have to modify the case of the remote to install this uh, new thumb wheel. It's not complicated, we're gonna do it together now. And well, let's crack on. Here is my Flip Sky VX4. We need to open this up. Okay, so you're going to start with peeling back the sticker on the back of the uh, remote. Just be careful, don't damage it because you will use it back. There is a little Phillips screw right at the back. Let's take the screw out. That's it, don't lose it. Well, you can put the uh, sticker back over for now so you don't damage it like that. Now, because we're replacing the thumb wheel anyway, I'm going to take the flat headed screwdriver and prime it between the case and the wheel. Nice and gentle, don't use too big or too small just right if you use it too small of a screwdriver what's going to happen is you will uh, well damage the plastic so you prime it open by twisting the screwdriver now the case is falling falling apart from each other and now just pull the remote apart okay and straight away well didn't want it for for it to fall out like this but it did <laughs> there it is your original thumb wheel. It pretty much looks like 
same sensor as it's used in uh, Trample Wand, actually. Yeah, that's thick. Doesn't it, guys? Yeah, it looks exactly like it. So, just now, a comparison is really perfect timing for comparison. So, this is the original uh, thumb wheel. You see how tiny the little knobby thing is? And it's just a bit of, bit of plastic, really. And this is the upgrade. Okay, so, let's have a look. Now, what we got here, we also got the rest of the sensor right there well we're going to have to disconnect these three wires right there you see the color coded black white and red exactly same thing on the replacement one black white and red so grab yourself a really really small soldering iron we're gonna have to unsolder those cables and solder the new ones on or you can cut these cables here and just connect color to color so whatever you're more comfortable with doing resoldering or just cutting and twisting the cables together and soldering here it's up to you now we will have to do a bit of modification to the plastic now I'll show you, I hope I'll show it to you so you can see it. So you see the front of this plastic enclosure right there. So this bit right here. Is it focusing? I hope it is. See this bit right there? This needs to be cut out. And also on the other side of the cover, you got these two little upstands there and there they need to be cut out you can use little snips and get them as low as possible and cut them off or you can use a uh, or you can use a dremel uh, and you know cut them off or as i said the probably easiest way is to uh, use tiny little snips and get in there and just cut them off just like that and then maybe after just getting in there with the Dremel just to clean it up because the sensor needs to sit in here nice and comfortable and yeah and plastic not to be on its way so I'm going to prep the, uh, the plastic I'm going to connect the cables color to color simple as that and I'll show it to you uh, how it looks like when it's assembled To make it simpler for you guys, like if you don't have a Dremel or tools like that, what you could do, you know that bit here that we need to cut out. So if you take little snips like this, like electrical snips, and just keep on cutting the plastic in different directions, like from one way, another way, and just keep on pulling on it and just cutting, 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 cutting every kind of like milli millimeter. And what you'll see, they can actually get rid of it just like that, simply. See? Pretty much there. Don't need it to have any fancy tools. And then with a knife or a scalpel, whatever you got in your workshop, you could just be careful, obviously. Don't cut your fingers. Just dig out the little bit sticking out. Make it nice and flush. I'm going to use a Dremel because I've got it. But you don't have to. There's always ways of doing something if you don't have the power tools. Obviously it's easier with power tools. But if you don't have it, don't worry. You can still get it done. And by the way, when you are using power tools, do not forget to use your safety glasses. One thing you don't want to do is ruin your eyes. You only got two. There we go. So, within what? Two minutes, the casing is now prepared for the installation 
of the sensor. Guys, don't forget, there are two little knobbly bits right here along this plastic side. So you cut the front off right here, that little wall, and there's two little knobbly bits on both sides. You need to cut them off as well for the sensor to sit in nicely. So now imagine, you can see the battery, that's the part of the uh, remote you hold in your hand. And on the uh, new upgraded uh, sensor and the thumb wheel, you have that black bit and then the sticky tape. So what needs to happen is, the black bit needs to be on the same side as the battery. So this is how you're going to install it, like that. Okay, so peel off the uh, double-sided tape. Then the bit with the cables is going to go under this little board there, just like that. Cables stick up and you clip it right into the little spot that you just prepped for it. Boom, just like that. See? All the spaces are nice now and it's sticking out. Lovely. Look at that. Very protruding. Very good. Okay, so now you're going to take your favorite soldering iron out or as I said just connect cable to cable you know black to black red to red white to white that's I think what I'm gonna do just cut them short connect them to each other by the way guys if you want to know uh, what kind of soldering irons, uh, irons I am using have a look in the description I will leave a few links to the ones that I am using If you're interested, I do solder quite a lot and having a good soldering iron makes all the difference. Now, so the cables are all soldered together. Guys, I would strongly recommend to check your soldering. If you have soldered the cables freshly onto the motherboard just take uh, tweezers or if you want by hand just pull on the cables just to make sure that you don't have the cold solder because the last thing you want is your remote cables falling off when you're riding I'm using a uh, magnifying glass as well just to make sure that you know the contacts are soldered in run and uh, you're not touching two cables together before you put the remote together turn it on just to verify that everything is okay and you've got operational remote which I do brilliant now tuck the cables away loop them out away from that black plastic bit here because this is where the screw goes in uh, through so you don't want the screw obviously damaging cable. Also, make sure that these cables are not on the way of the thumb wheel on both sides. So operate the thumb wheel while the remote is open, just to make sure nothing is catching. Thumb wheel is positioned. Now, don't forget about your wrist, uh, <laughs> wrist uh, uh, lanyard, because it's pain in the butt to get it fished through the case after you uh, Put the case together so let's put it back in to the slots here put it together just like that make sure that the thumb will sit in nicely press and now click and press the rest of the case So it closes up, all the space is now closed up. It clicked all the way around. Now you got yourself a nice upgrade for the VX4. Look up by how much this trigger is protruding through the case. Very nice. Okay, quite happy. Now we're going to peel back 
the sticker and I'm sure I did not lose that screw while I was filming I was moving around oh come on just told you guys not to lose it but I think I lost it myself ah there you go right in front of me tighten up the screw this way you know the case will not fall apart while you're riding put the sticker back over okay and well if you do have the case for your remote which I do we're going to put the case back on it I like protecting my remotes okay so now even with the protective case the thumb will stick out of the remote quite a lot and it's definitely much better grip much better grip and the spring is quite nice it does return nicely yeah well I quite like it good travel and it feels I don't know just feels just feels better okay that was easy enough to replace and that's it guys that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it if you do like this video and you would like to upgrade your remote I'm gonna leave the link to the list services uh, shop in the description below you can buy yourself a little kit it's easy to install as you can see and a lot of benefits as usual ride safely build safely see you very soon and all the best bye